Welcome to Gail Jan Yoga. If you're a rock climber, this video is going to be a real treat for you. And for anyone else that wants some nice self-care for their hands and feet and opening up the shoulders, working on the inner thighs, the adductors and the hamstrings. So it can help you kind of reach and grab those tiny little holds that you need to do in rock climbing. And in life, we have a type of climbing that we do, you know, climbing through different situations and dealing with different people and um, challenges that we come up upon. So uh, rock climbing is like an art form and yoga can be as well. So it's always nice to have a blanket handy and a couple of blocks. So if you need to go get those, you can pause the video and we'll meet back on the mat. All right, so let's start with our hands. And first we're just gonna warm up the hands. So you can bring the palms together and we're just gonna think of keeping the heels of the hands together and rolling out the hands, rolling out the shoulders. Just getting some nice internal and external rotation. So I'm going to roll the hands inward and then roll them outward. Shake out the wrists. Come onto your hands and knees and we'll do some strengthening for the hands and wrists. So when you're on your hands and knees, whenever you're weight bearing on your hands, it's important to spread the fingers apart and grip with the fingers. So just like you were trying to dig into the sand or dig into the dirt in your garden, you want to grip almost like you were holding onto something, like we're holding onto the earth. And then if you keep your weight more forward over the wrists, you're going to lift the heels of the hands up and lower them down. So inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Just move with your breath. It doesn't really matter if it's an inhale or exhale. The more your weight is forward, the more of a strengthening effect you'll feel. So I'm going to walk my knees in a little bit. And just lift and lower. You might be feeling something right about now. So we'll keep going a little bit more. Now another thing that you can do is you can come up onto the fingertips and then spread the pinky and the thumb apart. So lift in and lower onto the fingertips, keeping some weight bearing into the hands. Just noticing how that feels and can you deal with some discomfort without hurting yourself it's kind of like life and life on the rocks things aren't always comfortable but the view from the top is great good and then start to circle around your hands keeping the hands active so notice if your hands are starting to become limp ish and see if you can dig in there a little bit more just like sometimes we have to dig into ourselves a little bit more to accomplish what we want or to get through what we need to get through and then come back to center rotate your fingers so the thumb rotates outward fingers towards the knees which is also going to rotate the shoulder joint so rotate the shoulders rotate the hands and if you can't face your fingers towards your knees that's okay you can turn the fingers outward and rock side to side. You can bring your wrist, the wrists a little closer to each other. That'll give you more stretch. And for those of you that can face your fingers towards your knees, just rock forward and back. So if you let the heels of your hands come up, you'll get more into the fingers because notice I'm keeping my knuckles down. Or you can try and keep the heels of the hands down and get a little more into the wrists. So just noticing where the weight is, how it's feeling in your arms, is going to guide you for what is the best way to do this for you. Again, we're not always trying to be the most comfortable that we can be, but we're trying to give our bodies and our minds as much benefit as possible. Good, and then tuck your toes, sit back on your heels. And if this is too much for your feet, you can always um, untuck your toes or just lean a little bit forward or just do it for a shorter period of time. And then we'll interlace our fingers, press out through the hands. As you reach your hands back, pull your ribs in. So the ribs pull in and the arms reach back. Get a big stretch in your shoulders and stretch over to the right. 
and to the left. Trying to keep your ribs in and your arms back. And release the hands. You can untuck your toes if you want. And then imagine that you're grabbing the back of your shoulders and you're trying to lift a shirt up over your head. So reach the arms back and then the other arm in front. Reach up and open. And just one more time. Feeling those shoulders. Moving around made me feeling a few little like, you know, kind of, I don't know, crackly places. Now we're gonna do another, it's like a Qigong practice. It's, it's a, a, like thinking that you have two cups of teas in your hand and you don't wanna spill the tea. So start reaching. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna mirror for you. So this is gonna be my right hand. It'll look like my left. I'm gonna start reaching the right hand forward and up on a diagonal. And then keeping the palm, palm flat, I'm gonna circle around. And then maybe lean over to the side, reach my hand back again, and circle forward. Across to a diagonal, flexing the wrist, reaching my arm over my head, and reaching the shoulder back behind. And one more time. Forward, out to the side, rotating in that shoulder joint. Come back to center, and then we'll do it with the left hand. So reach your arm across, back, behind, feeling the shoulder blade, move in all different types of rotation, internal and external. And come back to center. We'll come back onto our hands and knees. Now we're gonna stretch out the back of our hands. So you can place your, the top of your right hand on the floor, left hand a little bit forward, spread out the fingers and press the fingers into the floor and start to lean back and forth. And you can decide, like I brought my hand a little more forward because I wasn't getting as much stretch as I wanted. And I'll switch sides. So palm faces up, top of the hand is down, the fingers are spread. And you wanna go slowly and gently because you don't wanna hurt yourself. Just about everyone is gonna feel some sensation doing this. Good, and then shake it out. You can sit back on your heels, shake out the hands, and we can do something like this non-weight bearing. So before you get out of bed or if you're in traffic or stopped at a stoplight, you can use the opposite hand to pull your fingers back with your wrist straight or bent or elbow straight or bent. And you can just go back and forth between these ranges of motion. Always finding a little resistance with the hand that's being stretched. So pushing forward, I'm pushing forward with this hand as I'm pulling back with this hand. And then same thing, you can make fists, which will give you a bigger stretch and pull your, your fists back as you press forward. This feels really good. <laughs> it's helped me a lot with my hands, practicing handstands and just mix it all up, shake it out. And we'll do a little bit of forearm massage. So we can use our own body to massage our forearms. And place your forearm down and you can take the palm of your hand is one part of your body that you can use and gently press and release as you work your hand up and down your arm. You could use your forearm, same thing, pressing and releasing. And you can also glide your forearm and you determine the pressure, which is really nice. And you can also use your knee very gently. It's a bigger surface. Just a little bit of weight on there. Pressing and releasing. And stretch your arms forward. Notice how that feels. And then we'll do the other side. 
So left forearm down. You just lean your weight over your arm. Little presses and releases. Use the forearm. And then glide. And maybe try the knee if you like the knee. So you don't have to use all of these body parts. You can use one or two or as many as you want. Stretch the arms out again. Let your forehead rest on the floor. Take some nice deep breaths here. And walk your hands back. And we're gonna do some strength building with our core, with the TVA. Now, you can use blocks or you don't have to use blocks. So I'm gonna start off with blocks. So I'm bringing the blocks just behind my knees or even with the knees. I'm gonna place my hands flat on the block, spreading the fingers apart, bow forward, and then I'm gonna pull my knees up into my chest. Big toe monster together and lower down. So exhale, pull up, inhale lower, exhale lift. Inhale lower, now you can do this without the blocks as well. Pulling up and lowering down. Trying to use your core more than your hands and feet. One more. Good, and relax. And then we're gonna hold our knees up and try and pick up one foot, lift and lower one foot at a time. So on your exhale, you lift your knees up and then just breathe here, inhale or exhale, doesn't really matter. And lower down. Second side, pull up. Really using the core a lot. Ah, oh, and lower down. <laughs> That's always hard for me. So we'll take a little break now in our child's pose. Spread the knees apart. Lower your chest toward the floor, arms forward. And feel the breath move. Feel the fullness of the breath. After a little bit of a challenging workout, focusing on the, the core, which is really our abs, our back, our shoulders, kind of all of it. And inhale back up. Do some more core work. So this time we're gonna go from plank to forearm plank and back to plank, one arm at a time. So during this whole process, you wanna keep the belly lifted, ribs drawing in, arms and legs active. In your exhale, you can lower your right forearm down and then the left, and then plant the right hand and the left hand. So we're lowering and lifting, and really this involves the whole body, because if your legs aren't engaging, my legs weren't engaging, I don't think I could do this. And then we'll do the other side, so we'll start left side down, right side down, left side up, right side up, left side down, right side down, left side up, right side up, two more. You need to stop, stop. I want to stop. I think I can go one more time safely. And happily, I'm going to rest in child's pose. You can rest with me. Try and find the softness that can come after, after the effort. And really we're trying to blend effort and softness most of the time. And sometimes when we're being really restorative, it's gonna be a lot more softness. And sometimes when we're working hard, it's gonna be a lot more effort. Let's come up onto our hands and knees and do some cat cows. So, Again, you want to grip the floor with your fingers. Inhale, reach the heart up. 
and exhale round your spine push into the floor try and spread those shoulder blades apart and then inhale shoulder blades come together retracting exhale they spread apart protracting let's go back and forth trying to feel each vertebrae moving independently so not like you have a rod in your back but that the spine is flexible and mobile and pliable and movable and then come up into plank pose bend your knees stretch back to down dog now we're gonna cat cow our spine back and forth between plank and down dog so inhale round your spine forward to plank and then exhale Arch your back, pushing the hands forward. Inhale, round forward. And exhale, press back. If you want an added challenge, you can come up onto your fingertips. So inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. If this hurts your fingers. Don't be a martyr. Come down. And you don't have to come onto the fingertips at all. And then in your down dog, stretch out one calf at a time. So reaching my left knee forward, I'm trying to press out through my right heel, keeping my weight back. And switch from side to side. And we're going to work on the hamstrings a little bit. So inhale, reach your right leg up. Come up onto your left tippy toes. And then hug your knee tightly into your chest. Bring your shoulders forward. Keep the knee lifting as you place your foot down. Lower your left knee down. And here's where you could have a blanket under your knee if it was uncomfortable on your knee. And this is a good place to use your blocks. You don't have to use the blocks, but the blocks gives you more height. So you can bring your shoulders back and really get into this back hip flexor. So alternating between Stretching your right hip back and reaching forward over your right leg. And then reaching your right knee forward. Stretching between your back knee and your back hip. We'll just go slowly forward and back. And then we'll place our hands and step back. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up. Reach high on the right tiptoes. Stretch along through your spine. And on your exhale, pull your knee in tight as you can. Keep lifting as you come forward. Place the foot down, lower your back knee down. Take your blocks. Inhale. Chest up, knee forward, shoulders back. Exhale, pull your left hips back, bow over your leg. Keep a soft bend in your knee. Notice where the stretch is for you today. And reach forward and back. Blocks to this uh, out of the way. Place your hands, step back to down dog. And lower your knees to the floor. Tuck your toes. You might want to use blocks for this. So we're going to come onto our toes, starting with the thighs parallel to the ground. And then really pulling back through the belly and trying to control the knees going forward and touching and then pulling the knees back up. So you can use your blocks to help steady yourself. Or you could try not using the blocks. 
and getting as smooth as you can. Whoa. And then if you want to add on, so you could start using the blocks, just stretch your knees forward and then bring the heels down. And come forward, lower the knees, and back and lower down. I'll try it without my hands. So I'm not totally smooth yet. <laughs> One more time. Woo! Good. And then come on up into a standing forward fold. Let your head dangle. Move the blocks off to the side. And then we're gonna walk forward, coming into Down Dog. Oh, down Dog is one of my favorite poses. I just think of dogs stretching and how happy they look. I wanna feel the same way. So inhale, reach your right leg up. Exhale, step it forward between your hands again. Pivot on your feet. So you're in a wide-legged straddle and begin to bend one knee at a time, nice and slowly. Maybe going a little deeper, or maybe just finding a place that you don't want to go any deeper. But if you want to go deeper, you can lower your hips towards your heels, let the opposite foot turn up, and switch sides. So moving slowly. No need to rush. I really do want to feel. You can come back to center. And you want to have one block handy over by the right side of your mat. And I'm going to leave my left foot where it is. So the back edge of the outside edge of the foot is more or less parallel to the back edge of the mat, or maybe pointing a little bit forward. And then I'm going to walk both hands over to the outside of my right foot. And I'm going to push my hip back, maybe use the block here. So I'm pushing into my right foot, pushing into my left foot. Take your left hand behind your back, draw the belly in, get long from your back foot out through the crown of your head and start to open up the chest. So I don't have a lot of weight on this bottom hand, but I'm pushing into the feet, opening up through the chest, and then just let my arm float up. And if you wanted to not use the block, you could move it out of the way. Try and line your arms up over each other. And look down at your foot, bend your knee right over your ankle, push into the back foot, come up, warrior two. Notice I'm not lifting this back hip, I'm trying to keep my hips even. The deeper I go into this front leg, the more challenging it is. So stretch your arms out, and then inhale, reach back to reverse your warrior, so keep the knee moving forward, the front knee moving forward. And then come back to warrior two, bend your elbow, place your form on your thigh, and search a circle. Big circle with your arms. If you really wanted more challenge, you could reach the bottom arm up. And next time you circle back, reach back, reverse your warrior. And then come all the way forward again, hand to the block or to the floor, and sweep your top arm forward, coming into Parsvakanasana. So make sure your front knee is facing in the direction of your toes, pressing into that back foot, reaching out through the top arm. And lower your hand down and step back, downward facing dog. Again, walking out one foot at a time. Inhale, reach your left leg up. Exhale, knee into your chest, keep your knee high, step your foot forward. Pivot on your feet again, coming into your forward fold. And again, bending the knees from side to side. And bring your left hand to the center of your mat, 
Bring your right hand behind your back and start to open up into a twist, pushing in evenly into both legs. And reach your right arm up. And lower the right hand down, centering your hand between your legs, like right underneath your nose. Reach your left hand behind your back, open up this left shoulder. Push into your legs and release your arm. Good, lower your left hand down. Keep the right foot where it is, maybe the toes a little bit forward, and walk your hands as you pivot your left foot forward. Again, using a block here can be very helpful. So push your left hip back and push into both feet. Draw the low belly in, reach your right hand behind your back. Keep the legs strong and open. Open the chest and then reach your arm up. Again, the balance is in my legs. And here my, my ribs are a little bit lifted, so I'm gonna try and like relax them down so I get a longer space between my hips and my shoulders and my head. And looking down, bend your knee, bring your knee right over your foot, press into the back foot, inhale up. Warrior two. Take a moment to adjust your stance, finding that evenness between your front foot and your back foot. And then keeping the front knee reaching forward, reach your arms up and back, reverse your warrior. And come forward, place your form on your thigh and circle the arms. Big circles, keeping that back leg active. So easy to forget that back leg. Again, reach the bottom arm forward if you like. It's an option. And next time your arm reaches up, reach it back. Reverse your warrior. Come back forward. You can use a block here or place your hand directly on the ground. Sweep your top arm forward. Push into your back foot. Reach long from your outside of your back foot to your fingertips. And keeping both legs active, Inhale up, warrior two. Reach back, reverse your warrior. And then step back, downward facing dog. Again, you can bend one knee at a time. Lift up through the belly. Bring your knees to the floor. Walk your hands forward, come onto your belly and we'll do some calf stretches. I mean some quad stretches. <laughs> so bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand for your foot. Push your foot into your hand, just enough to create some resistance. Try and roll your shoulders as far forward as you can and keep that left knee in. Don't let it wander out to the side. So keep it hugging in. And on an exhale, press your heel towards your hip. And let it release a little bit. And you can roll, if you can get your uh, heel towards your hip and keep your elbow up in the air and maybe roll the fingers forward. Keep the belly active. So keep pressing your belly towards your spine. And do those gentle like, hugging in, stretching your knee out, pulling the belly up and releasing. And if you want to go a little deeper, you could come up onto your hand. This makes it quite a bit deeper. And then we'll lower down and switch sides. So bend the right knee, reach back for your right foot. Push into your hand a little bit to create some tension, good tension. And rotate your fingers forward, possibly, or keep your hand where it was. Stretch out through your knee, pull in through your belly. And press to your edge and then relax. So your edge might be way back here. You know, we all have different edges, so listen to your body. Don't try and overdo it. And again, if you want to come up a little bit higher, feel free to do that. And release your foot. And we're gonna make our way back to down dog. Look forward to your hands, bend your knees and either step forward or hop forward. 
inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, bow. Press into the earth to rise toward the sky. And exhale, hands to your heart center. And we're gonna do some balance poses, one-legged balance poses. So we're gonna do tree pose to warrior three, to uh, like getting into the hips, and back to tree pose. So you can always use a wall, that's fine. If you've never done this before, but I'm gonna talk you through it. So start by noticing your feet. Are they planted evenly? Are you leaning a little forward or leaning back or rolling, letting your feet roll out or roll in? So try and find an evenness through all four corners of your feet. It's a little soft bend in the knees, so don't wanna lock out the knees. A little soft bend in the knees. Then shift your weight into your right leg. Pick your left foot up. Now you could start with your heel above your ankle and just lift the toes for balance. Or you could bring your foot to your calf. You don't wanna be pushing into your knee. Or you could bring your foot all the way up. And hug in, both legs hugging into the midline. So it feels like you're lifting out of your hip rather than sinking into it. So lifting out of the hip, pull in, bring your hands first to your heart center and your gaze forward. So maybe like just above eye level or like at the floor way far away. So eye level is generally considered a little bit more challenging. The higher up you look, the more challenging it could be. And maybe reach your arms up. So keep the belly engaged and we're gonna keep this left leg active. If your hands go forward, it's a little harder, so you can always bring your hands back. But keep the belly strong and active, just like we did in our planks. And reach your left leg back. Try and keep your shoulders lifting. And your arms could be back instead of forward. But the, both legs have to be super active for this to be able to balance. And bend both knees. Cross your left ankle above your right knee and stretch your arms forward as you reach your hips back. Sink as low as you can. And this might be a good place to have a block to put your hands on, or maybe you can lower your hands to the floor. Let's feel the stretch in your outer left hip. Keep the belly engaged and lifting. And then to come out, We'll press into that standing leg. Come all the way up. Bring your foot to your inner thigh. Hug in again as you reach up. Getting tall. And then with control, release and lower down. We'll try the other side. So sometimes, most of the time, we're a little bit stronger on one side, a little bit weaker on the other. But we've also just practiced on our first side. So it might be a little bit easier. Again, feel the whole foot and how is it pressing into the floor. And draw the belly in, hug in with both legs. Arms can start at your heart and stay here or they can reach up. So you can start with your arms forward or you could just bring your foot back, bring your arms back, keep the shoulders lifted. And try and keep your hips level as you can and bend both knees. Cross your right ankle above your left knee. Reach your arms forward to reach your hips back initially. Keep this top foot nice and flexed. And then hands to the block or the floor. And just stay here, maybe sinking a little deeper, just enjoying the stretch. Imagining that you're enjoying the stretch. And press into your foot. Inhale back up. Place your foot for tree pose. Soften those ribs back, pull the belly in, get tall. And then release. Again, with control, lowering down. And we'll come into a squat. So some people may need to open their legs really wide and turn the feet out a lot. Other people may be able to keep the feet in a little closer. So experiment for yourself, lower your hips. And if you don't squat much, although I think rock climbers would definitely be squatting, so it's probably not an issue for you. But if it is, just know that if you practice with time, most likely you'll be able to get your heels down. If you need to use a block to under your hips for now, you can do that. Press your elbows out and your knees in. 
Then sink your right shoulder down, hold your left ankle with your right hand and reach your left arm way across to the right. And come back to center and the other side. Reach and come back to center. Lower your hips to the floor and we'll come onto our backs. Let's start with hugging your knees into your chest and gentle rocking from side to side. And then hug your right knee in, stretch your left leg out. Really reach out through your left toes. Feel the stretch on the inner thighs and other places, wherever you feel it, notice. Then take your left hand to the outside of your right knee, open your right arm out to the side. And we'll gently bring our right knee over to the left in a nice gentle twist. Turn your head to the right. And you could always wiggle your shoulders a little bit to the left. It's very possible that your right knee and your right shoulder will not both be down on the floor. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Don't try and force it. But instead, see if you can relax into it. Letting your muscles, your body soften with the breath. Being willing to accept that we can't always do everything we want every time we want to. But it's a journey and we're making progress. This is feeling so good for me. I could stay here for a while, but I'm going to come back up. Hug the knees in. Hold the left knee in this time. Stretch the right leg out. Draw that left knee in. Tight if you can. Whatever feels like a nice stretch is happening on the inner thighs for you. And take the right hand to the outside of the left knee. Open your left arm out to the side and slowly bring your leg across. Turn your head to the left. Instead of trying to force it by pushing and pulling, See if you can let go and notice if the twist will happen a little bit easier for you. And surrender to your breath. Be present with whatever, whatever you're feeling right now. And let it be. It could feel really good to stay here for a full minute or two and you can always pause the video and stay a little longer if, if you like. Otherwise, come back up to center. Hug your knees into your chest and then hold the back of your thighs. Bring your knees in as close to your sides as you can, thighs and ribs touching. And see if you can keep your legs where they are and bring your feet forward until you feel like your soles of your feet are parallel to the ceiling. This is a happy baby. So if when you start to reach up, everything lifts up, then instead of doing happy baby like this, which isn't really so happy, <laughs> just keep holding the back of your thighs or maybe hold your ankles. But if you can keep your back flat, shoulders and hips down and hold your feet at the same time. You can hold your feet and gently rock side to side. And release your feet, place your feet on the floor as wide as the mat. Open your arms out to the side and we're gonna gently windshield wiper, legs side to side, but the first twist, let's stay here a little bit and reach out through that front knee, the top knee, sorry. So my knees are to the right, it would be the left knee reaches forward and I'm gonna pull back with my belly to stretch between my hip bone and my knee. You can always heel toe your left foot across to the left a little bit more if you like and try and point those toes. 
And again, be gentle here, but somewhat assertive. So by pressing the knee away and drawing the belly back, we're creating an extra little stretch. It's not a whole lot, but it's, it should feel different to you. And then inhale back up. You can walk your left foot back, lower your knees to the left. And you can see I'm gonna heel toe my right foot out a little bit. I'm gonna try and point my toes, stretch the knee forward and the hip back. And inhale back up to center, walk your foot in and just slowly roll your knees from side to side. So if your feet are apart, it's gonna feel different than when your feet are together. And bring your knees into your chest, knees together, and then we'll twist over to the right, head to the left, relax here. Inhale, push your left hip down to lift your knees up and exhale, knees over to the left, head turns to the right and relax. Every time you do even these simple poses, if you really pay attention, something's gonna feel a little different. Just like every time you climb that rock wall, even though it might be the same wall, you might see it a little bit differently. Even if your fingers and your feet are just a quarter of an inch different, it could feel different when we gain that type of sensibility. So bring your knees back up, hug your knees in, maybe lift your shoulders off the floor, and on an exhale, stretch your legs out, arms open wide palms facing up. I like to lift my shoulders off the floor and then I'm lowering my ribs and then the shoulders. So I get a little more space in my back and I can feel like everything is a little closer to the floor. The ribs are softening inward. So Savasana is the ultimate rest pose. And it's so rewarding and it's so important to balance effort with relaxation. So it's kind of like reaching the top of that mountain. There's a lot of effort that goes into the climb. Then it feels so good to just stand there and look at the view and feel that sense of accomplishment inside of yourself. So take as much time as you want for Savasana. Please try and take at least three or four or five minutes, very minimum. And just give yourself this opportunity to completely relax. We don't have to be going, going, going all the time. It's just as important to relax, enjoy the view, and appreciate our life and what we've been given and what we've accomplished and just really appreciating ourselves for who we are and know that we have unlimited potential. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe if you aren't already. And I would love to hear your comments. I would love to know what you think, what any requests you might have. And thank you so much for taking this time to practice yoga with me. I'm going to say goodbye, but stay here as long as you want. Oh, namaste.